All right. So, um, yeah, welcome to my presentation about hierarchy support and RAP. My name is Dominic. I'm a developer in the RAP runtime engine. And yeah, before jumping straight to the presentation, um, I'm just I just wanted to to mention that I'm um, trying to keep it short and simple during the presentation. So um, I'm going to focus on the relevant aspects um, in the in the demo at the end. And um, I'm not going to cover all the edge cases or specialties of the protocol or all the restrictions that we have, um, just the most important ones so that you can start developing. So um, the agenda will be a short introduction into the topics, so where do we come from, um, what are the new changes in the OData specification, um, how do you model everything and consume um, hierarchies in RAP, but also in ABAP, and of course, uh, the example of the demo um, in the system. So um, the introduction, generally um, speaking, um, hierarchies refer to an organization, organizational structure in which items are ranked in a specific manner. So um, in more theoretical terms, we call them um, trees or rooted trees. Um, so we're talking about data and its structure and how records are connected to each other. And um, yeah, we'll have a look at how all that fits into the ABAP programming model wrap and um, how we included it over there. So it might be familiar with this picture. This is um, a subset of the big picture of RAP. And um, of course, when introducing new features like hierarchies, we want to ensure that um, it fits into the programming model and as such also into our cloud. Um, so we, of course, keep the backbone of the programming model in which you define an interface um, view on top of a database table and then project um, all the relevant aspects in the CS projection, and then expose everything in the service definition and service binding. Um, the access control and roles and such, um, of course, also, also need to be um, part of that, but I'm not going to cover them in this presentation because of time constraints, um, but it is important that you, uh, of course, uh, protect your data and um, you can define DCLs on top of hierarchy views. And um, here, I would also like to mention that um, with the current release 23.11, which is um, available right now, um, only read-only hierarchies are available. So you can only query data. You cannot modify that. Um, Marcel and Volker earlier today mentioned um, with the lab preview that transactional capabilities, um, so editable tree views, are in the making. So um, the picture will still be um, valid here in which you define the behavior definition for CDS views and um, implement everything in um, behavior implementations. Um, but with this release, it's going to be read only and um, we'll be focusing only on the modeling and the query part in this presentation now. So next up, OData. What's new in OData v4? Um, the recursive hierarchies. So the protocol defines the hierarchy as a collection of entities called nodes. And um, the hierarchy defines which of those are part of the hierarchy and associates each node um, with one or zero nodes, um, and they are called parent nodes. Um, a recursive hierarchy can only be applied to entity, ent entity types and, um, of course, need to be um, identified with a qualifier, um, which is used to reference the hierarchy um, in transformation operations. So um, of course you have a huge tree and sometimes you want, only want to display a subset and you do that with so-called transformations and to identify which hierarchy you want to call the qualifier needs to be passed there too. <clears throat> in OData, the same entity can serve as nodes in different recursive hierarchies given different qualifiers. So um, if you have an employee data set um, and you are in a matrix organization, of course, can have a look at the same data using um, the management um, view or the project view or whatever other types of view, and those are different hierarchies on the same um, entity set. Um, our data, of course, use common terms, so root parent, children, leaf, ancestors, descendants. Um, those are all common terms, and uh, there is no rocket science behind it. Um, everything I'm mentioning here and also in the following slides um, can be read through the documentation, so I'm always linking them. Um, if the presentation can be uh, loaded up later on, um, I'll send it to the organizers. Otherwise, you can just 
search um, for the keywords that I've always highlighted in blue, and you will find uh, the documentation when Googling for that. All right, so hierarchy transformations, I already mentioned them. Um, there are different transformations available, and um, they are pretty self-explanatory. So ancestors identifies previous nodes leading to the root. Um, descendants identify the subtree of a given new root uh, of a given node. Um, the traverse transformation um, can be executed in pre or post order. So whether the tree should be displayed um, starting with the root or whether it should be um, displayed starting with the leaves. And of course, SAP has defined um, some custom transformations like top levels in this case, which I will show later on. And um, they are in SAP's vocabulary, not part of the standard. Um, common parameters of the ancestors and descendants transformations are um, the following. So hierarchy nodes um, identify the entity or the source entity where the data is located. Um, the hierarchy qualifier identifies the hierarchy that is used to query the data. The node property um, identifies um, the, the ID of the hierarchy, um, the transformation sequence inside uh, a, transform a hierarchy transformation um, is used to specify the start condition with which the transformation, the hierarchy transformation should be executed. So um, if you have an ancestors transformation and you provide a filter over here, then um, this identifies the start node of the ancestors transformation. Um, then max distance, so how many um, levels starting from the start node should be included and keep start identifies whether the starting node should be included in the result set. So how does it look like in the end? Um, here's an example. So um, starting with the service endpoint, um, we want to query an entity set employees and we want to execute the apply transformation ancestors. And um, the first parameter is the hierarchy nodes. So which data set is the base of this hierarchy? <clears throat> the hierarchy qualifier, um, then the node property identifying the key, and then a transformation sequence filter, um, which states that we want to start the ancestor transformation with all employees that have the first name Dominic. And we want to include that node. So it would be me and all other Dominics inside my organization and all my manager, all the managers up to the CEO. And that will be the result set of this transformation. And um, how does it look like in the metadata? So the employee's entity is annotated with a recursive hierarchy. So it's just added uh, metadata um, with the information that the um, hierarchy qualifier employee hierarchy is associated with it. <laughs> then the Entity type of the employees um, is extended with a complex property, um, which references um, the hierarchy properties itself. So um, the, the specification states that certain properties um, are present, like the level or whether a leaf is expanded or closed, or collapsed, or whether it's a leaf. And um, all that information needs to be transported. Um, and of course, the employee's entity doesn't have it yet, so um, a complex property is included, which contains all that information. Again, all the information can be read at the committee specification. <clears throat> so we covered uh, the OData specification, and we now know how it works um, and uh, how it's modeled and how can you consume it in ABAP and in REP. Um, so, ABAP SQL and CDS wraps um, the built-in HANA generator function and offers consumption in ABAP and RAP by ABAP SQL um, as a base of the of a um, CDS hierarchy or um, ABAP SQL um, hierarchy generator. Only HANA database tables can be used as a source, so you can't use virtual tables. Um, the special hierarchy attributes, so just as mentioned Rich, um, on the slide before, um, OData has um, built-in um, properties, hierarchy properties, and also HANA has special hierarchy attributes, um, which are implicitly available for consumption. Um, they are calculated by HANA. So for instance, the, the level of a node and um, how large the subtree is of a certain node that's um, calculated by HANA. And um, they can be accessed via the dollar node prefix 
and the names are explicitly reserved, so you can't um, define those them, uh, yourself. And if you want to reuse the dollar node attributes, you have to rename them because they are always implicitly available. Um, hierarchies can, of course, be used as data sources and other entities. Um, the implicitly available hierarchy attributes are not respected in that case, though. In case you want to use them um, in the view built on top, you have to explicitly mention them. And the same applies also to ABAP data type declarations. I'll just drink this. <clears throat> um, Anna, HANA and also ABAP SQL offer um, generator and navigation functions. Um, three of them are mainly used in the rep runtime by ABAP SQL, and those are the HANA, uh, the hierarchy generator, the hierarchy ancestors, and the hierarchy descendants navigation functions. Um, so as you can see, the names are pretty familiar with the um, OData specification, and they mean basically the same ancestors, um, the, the parent uh, to the root, the descendants are is the subtree, and the generator is to define a hierarchy and generate all the attributes of, um, of the hierarchy. <clears throat> um, querying hierarchies requires the use of common table expressions. Um, generally, you can, of course, do that in several um, SQL statements which follow each other, but um, for us, CTEs um, are the way to go because we want to just fire one SQL statement and execute everything in one go um, for performance reasons. So that's what we use in the Rip Runtime Engine. And again, um, you can find more about that in the um, hierarchies, our keyword documentation. Um, you can find additional information in the HANA Hierarchy Developer Guide, um, which covers all the implicit parameters, um, how to consume it, um, how the navigations work. And um, of course, also in the ABAP keyword documentation, which shows how that can be consumed in ABAP. <laughs> and come table expressions, of course. <clears throat> so um, having said that, um, the last point that we need to cover is how to model everything. And um, in REP, our guideline is that we stick with the picture that we have. So you have a database table on top. You've built an interface view, which exposes a consumption protection view, um, which is then used in the service definition, the service binding. What's new now is that um, you can define a hierarchy and associate that with the exposed consumption view using an annotation, which is called a data hierarchy, recursive hierarchy. And under the entity name, um, in a sub annotation, you can specify the name of the hierarchy that you want to associate with. Um, important here, the recursive hierarchy annotation offers additional annotations, but those are not allowed because um, those are only used for manually or yeah, handwritten services in which you want to use hierarchy um, functionalities and express or expose the properties there. So you're only allowed to use this annotation here. Um, yeah, and the hierarchy has to be built on top of the interface view. So um, we have two, um, yeah, you have two options over here. Either you build the hierarchy itself on top of the consumption view or um, on top of a view which is in the source of the consumption view. So it can be the interface view or the source of an interface view, which sometimes is in another view, but in this case, it's the database table itself. So the interface view is the way to go. <clears throat> We have additional restrictions. Um, so it's not allowed to use temporal data or filter or parameter derivations, um, as this would make everything too complex for the moment. <clears throat> we are a bit more restrictive than the data protocol. So we only allow one recursive hierarchy per um, exposed CDS entity. So you're not allowed to add additional hierarchies to the same entity. We have, um, just like HANA with um, its attributes, we have reserved names in rep. Um, it's unlikely that you would use them because we have a certain namespace for them. Um, but technically, it's possible that there is a name clash. So be aware. Um, the elements in the hierarchy um, are not to be renamed. So they have to have the same name as the base view. Um, unlike the protection, where renaming is, of course, possible and allowed, um, this is simply due to 
mapping constraints that we have. And um, of course, the direct exposure of hierarchy um, is not allowed in the service. So you can't add a hierarchy view to your service definition and expose it via a wrap uh, v4 service. All right, and with that, um, I'm basically already finished. Oh, of course, the, the, the information about this can be found in the um, rep documentation. There is a new subsection under develop implementing hierarchies. We can find everything. And with that, I would like to go to the system. <clears throat> So um, what's our use case? If you um, have watched the ABAPConf last year, I did a presentation over there um, about the ABAP crosstrace <clears throat> and how you can use it to analyze um, the execution of um, requests in the ABAP backend um, when they are built with RAP. And um, the app that I want to build using um, the hierarchies is basically a Fiori app to display the trace. Um, so what we do have over here is the trace results. So at the beginning, you can configure a, a trace. I can just show you the configuration that I had. Um, so I configured it for my user. I selected the rep runtime engine uh, because I want to know how it's executed. And um, once it's activated and you interact with the UI, um, the traces are written. And when displaying the trace results, um, over here, you get the different requests. <clears throat> so for each interaction on the UI, request is sent, the backend, and um, this creates a, an entry over here. And if you double click that entry, it will open a new window displaying the execution in, in, her, in a tree view, basically. Um, you can, again, display different levels. I'll keep it um, as it is right now. And what we want to do in the end um, with, our, sorry, with our application um, is the same. So we want to have a uh, list report where we have the different trace entries. And um, when selecting one of those in uh, the list report, the object page should be displayed in which you can see um, the tree view of the trace itself. <clears throat> so what's our data model? Um, we have the trace entry itself, um, which contains the trace ID, the user for which it was written, a description, and timestamp. Um, I restricted it here to the traces that are written for my user. And um, we have a composition association um, of exact one to many to the trace records itself. And if we have a look at the trace records, um, we have the trace ID to which it is associated, a record number, um, the parent number, the trace procedure, the process objects, the message, and the timestamp. So if we have a look at the UI, it's basically um, the first properties over here. So the procedure, process objects, message, and a timestamp, which is not visible right now. <clears throat> um, we have two associations. Um, the parent association, of course, to the trace, and already predefined another association um, to, which is an association of many to one, which is another restriction. Um, no multiple parents are allowed in, in wrap with hierarchies. And um, that parent record is identified by mapping the record number of the parent to the parent number inside this record. So pretty straightforward. Um, and we can now start to rebuild the picture that I've just drawn. So um, we will build on top of the trace, a consumption layer. So the DEC trace. Um, the trace header, consumption view. We go through the different steps. We define it as a projection view. Of course, it needs to be a root view entity. And for now, we keep it as it is because um, we need to redirect the association, of course, to the consumption view of the trace records. <laughs> And trace records consumption view. Again, a projection view. And now we can redirect the associations over here. So the trace itself is called C trace. 
and redirect to itself. So that you can see trace records. All right. Um, now, next up, just a second, we open up something else. <clears throat> All right, so uh, as we've seen in the picture, we have a interface view for the records and we now have a consumption view for the records. Now we need to define the hierarchy itself. So we go to the interface view, create a new data definition. We name it the trace hierarchy. And we give it a trace hierarchy view description. And um, as you can see, there is no template right now. Um, this depends on the system and ADT version that you have. Um, so for now, I just pick any template. But as far as I know, the new um, ADT version should have the define hierarchy template included. And that's what we need. <clears throat> so as the source, as mentioned, I want to select the interface view for the trace records. The child to parent association is the parent record. The start where condition, we keep it empty for now. The siblings should be ordered by the record number. And now the element list. Um, so of course we need to include the keys. So it's a trace ID and the record number. And for now, we also include the parent number because of course, um, the star where condition identifies um, the root of the hierarchy. So um, the root of a hierarchy is in the, our scenario, a trace which doesn't have a parent number. So that's our, oops, um, our condition. The hierarchy should start with the parent number as initial. All right, so over here, um, we have a couple of uh, restrictions and best practices um, that I wanted to mention. Um, of course, you can just go to the parent-child hierarchy, click F1, and it will open up the ABAP language help and the keyword documentation. Hierarchy. There it is, okay. As parent child hierarchy, define hierarchy. So um, there are a couple of additional parameters that you can specify apart from the start where condition, the siblings order, you can specify the depth. So, so whether the hierarchy should be cut off after a certain depth. Um, the node type, which is not supported in rep right now. Um, so this is used for um, heterogeneous uh, hierarchies where you have different data sources and want to combine them and want to differentiate um, which node um, uh, yeah, is of which type, so which data source is coming from that's currently not supported. Um, then load information, which options that you can set. Multiple parents, as mentioned, is not allowed. Um, that's also ensured by the association, <clears throat> orphans, um, uh, but up are rooted, as far as I know. Um, the cycles um, lead to an error. Um, generates bantry is um, not allowed, as far as I know, and cache settings. Yeah. Um, so, um, of course, we need to add an additional part, which is the directory. So, um, as we have seen, um, a trace record. Um, is always associated with a trace and it wouldn't make sense to display all records uh, because in the UI we want to select a trace and only display the records for that trace. So we need to introduce the um, directory part um, over here. So directory. And here we need to specify an association. So that's the trace association, the parent association. And um, we want to filter by the trace ID and we now need to specify a trace ID and we do that with the parameter. So we introduce a parameter 
error. There's p trace directory, and the type of that is this one. And now we can specify that we want the dollar parameters <clears throat> p trace. Oops. Trace directory. Okay, let's format everything. <clears throat> and with that, we are finished. So we can activate that. Um, a few remarks over here. So uh, we do not allow associations to be exposed in the hierarchy and no annotations in the hierarchy itself, um, apart from the one that is warranted right now here. And that's the authorization check in our case. <clears throat> um, we do not have any authorizations, so we state not required. Oops. And that's it. Um, a few performance remarks also from Hannah's side. We want to keep the element list over here as small as possible. Um, the reason is that the hierarchies are generated and then cached. And having a large um, selection list just creates big data sets. And to keep it, uh, or to improve the, the, the performance here, we want to keep it short. Also, the um, data set should be as small and stable as possible, um, because if you have um, recurring data changes, then the data hierarchy needs to be um, yeah, regenerated, um, which might be problematic for performance. And um, only simple projections of databases should be used. So you shouldn't have any complex view stacks, unions, anti-joins, cal columns, et cetera, because that will lead to performance issues as well. <laughs> All right, so we have defined the hierarchy. Uh, we now need to associate it with the consumption view of the records. So we specify the OData hierarchy, because of hierarchy annotation, and now we add the entity name. And the entity name is ZTE trace hierarchy. We activate that. And technically, we would be now finished to um, expose the view. But of course, we want to see something. So we need some, to add some annotations. <clears throat> so let's do that quickly. We go to the trace, and we add some UI annotations. I just copy paste them because typing out everything is take, going to take too much time. Let's ident everything correctly. And also, let's change the numbers, 20, 30, 40, activate. And um, yeah, of course, um, this is now the, the list report app um, for the trace. And when clicking on it, we want to display the object page. So we need to add facets to the object page. And I've prepared that as well. Let me just add that quickly over here. So we define two UI facets. One is the trace information containing the identification references over here. The other one is a line item reference to the records. So uh, we want to include the tree view itself on the object page. And to finish that up, we need to activate it. And of course, we need to annotate the records itself so that we can see something on the object page. Again. We copy the line item annotations over here to display all these. And we want to change the numbers three, four, five. And um, because I'm going to show you one of the features later on is um, we want to include also search capabilities. So we add the searchable annotation and we enable the trace procedure to be searchable, but to be the default search elements and also the process objects. <clears throat> All right, I think with that, we are finished. We can activate everything and we can create a service binding and service definition. 
So ZTE trace hierarchy service so definition, a meaningful description. And we finish it. We also include the trace records. Activate and we create a service binding on top of it. <clears throat> meaningful description. And here we select the OData v4 UI binding type. Oh. Did I forget something? Let's just double check everything. Trace. Um. No. That's a bit strange. <laughs> the problem doing uh, live demos. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure whether I forgot. Ah, yeah, I forgot it here. I forgot the redirect. Ah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the trace records. <clears throat> okay. Another term. Yep, now it works. Okay, so we activate the, the demo gods. <laughs> <laughs> and we publish our service. <clears throat> and now we can preview the trace that opened in a different window. Push it over here. All right, and if we hit go, we get some data. So we have three trace entries as previously seen in ADT. And um, we can display the object page um, as this uh, table for the records is pretty small and hard to show. I'm just going to quickly remove the first facet again for the demo. And we will reload the UI. Yep, now we got a big table. All right, so what can we do with um, with the UI? We can, of course, expand everything and we will see that all the data is included. We can collapse everything again. Um, we can export the data to Excel. So if I, okay, let me first load a few sub nodes and export it to Excel. Take a few seconds, I can open it up which again takes a few seconds. And here we are. Um, we get the same data with the possibility to expand and collapse nodes in Excel. And of course we can also search. So if we now check over here, we have style in the trace procedure, which we annotated as search, um, default element. And if we search here, we will see that the records are loaded and only the, the ancestors of the nodes that were identified as the start nodes are displayed. <clears throat> of course, we can do things like um, sorting um, over here. And yeah, with that, uh, that's basically the UI features. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is um, how everything is executed. So if we have a look over here at the developer tools of the um, of the browser. Um, if we expand a node, um, we will see that one batch request is sent. Let me just increase the size of that. And um, as previously shown, um, we receive a get request 
um, to the trace entity um, with the key. So that's the directory. Um, we navigate to the records and then a descendants transformation is executed again on the hierarchy that we have specified um, with the node property. The transformation is a filter transformation, <clears throat> including the trace ID and the record number. So that was the first entry. So the record number is in this case, 201 and a few properties are selected and um, yeah, skip and top is used. Um, as mentioned in the beginning, um, we have custom transformations. So in this case, that's the top level transformations. If we open um, the object page of a node, then a batch is sent and I have to find the correct one. That's over here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So over here we have um, a batch request with a change set of two operations. First, the count. And the second entry um, is a request again against the trace with the navigation to the records. And um, the apply transformation in this case is called com sub vocabularies hierarchy v1 top levels. The top levels transformation um, has a restricted set of parameters. So the hierarchy um, nodes, the hierarchy qualifier, the node property, um, and no transformation because the top level transformation has one meaning which is please return the top levels of the hierarchy with a certain level, in this case one. So the result set is um, all nodes of the hierarchy up until the first level, which is displayed over here. If the levels would be increased to two, then of course the parents of these two entries, as uh, the children of these two entries would be displayed too. <clears throat> now, um, the last thing I would like to show you is um, how to analyze and how to or, to understand what is done in the backend. So to do that, I'm going to activate the trace over here. We go to the UI and interact with it. So in this case, I'll create a request that um, sends the descendants transformation to the backend and we can deactivate it again over here. We refresh the trace results. We could actually go also do that on the UI. So if I <laughs> go back to the this report to go, there is a new entry that was created right now, December 7th. And over here, we could also see what is executed, but the most important part that the content is currently not included as in the UI because that's a bit more problem problematic. So we'll do that over here. <clears throat> over here, we can see two requests are executed. The first is against the trace. So um, as we've seen um, previously, the descendants transformation um, is a navigation and when executing a navigation an existence check needs to be executed on the source entity. So in this case, the trace to ensure that that record um, exists and it returns one row. So that's good. Otherwise the queue would abort. And now the complex part comes. So if we have a look at the, switch to this view over here. If we have a look at the content of this SQL, um, this is what we generate for one descendants transformation. It looks a bit more complicated than it probably is. And uh, just a short disclaimer, this is um, still, there are still improvements that we can do, um, one of which is the first two CTEs. So over here, um, the CTE1 um, selects a couple of elements from the trace hierarchy with the parameter and exposes the hierarchy property. And then, um, a second CTE is executed, which selects the same apart from this property and exposes it again with the hierarchy properties. <clears throat> the reason behind this is um, the first part is the um, hierarchy um, directory navigation. And the second part is the beginning transformation. So each transformation that we receive is split up into um, three CTEs. Um, we call them projection, the navigation, which I mentioned earlier, and the generation. Um, the reason is that for a transformation, for instance, in this case, if we go back to the UI, um, when expanding a node, we not only need to select the data and provide the children and all the information, but we need to tell the UI where to locate it, what the properties are, whether it has um, 
it has children and needs an expand node or not. And um, so we need to project certain information from the source um, to the following CTEs. So that's why we need a projection in the first place. And here you can see the unlimited tree sizes projected. So the number of the original tree. And um, these two parts, of course, could be uh, merged in the future. Um, next up, we have the navigation, as mentioned. Um, so we use the hierarchy descendants function. Um, we provide the start web condition, which identifies the start node of the, of the descendants transformation. Um, we select a couple of things. Um, we redefine an association, which is basically the parent association. But in this case, we don't need to use the business condition. We can just use the HANA attributes that are built in. In this case, we renamed them to Zadl hierarchy node ID and parent ID. And um, yeah, the last step is the hierarchy generation. So we need that because um, as mentioned, the UI might need to know how to organize everything. And so for the result set, we need to connect the, the data records again to each other so that they make sense again. And um, yeah, that's it for the CTEs. And we have now finished up everything. We can select the data and we can join them together with the business data. So in the picture, we have seen that there is the consumption view that it is exposed. And besides it is the hierarchy. The hierarchy does not contain all the elements from the consumption view. And um, in the end, you still want to get not only the data and how it's organized, you want to also get all the business relevant data. And therefore we need to join that. And you can see that we do that with the privileged <coughs> access. So it's important that hierarchy has its own authorization concept. Yeah, and with that, um, I think I can wrap it up if I do not have any additional time. Does the so you have time still three minutes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to start another topic, so <laughs> we'll take longer than three minutes. OK. I'll speak very fast like you have this. OK. Some more from you or? No, I would keep it or start with that because I could show how a search is executed, but that's just more complex than that. And will take more time. OK, cool. So then thank you very much for your talk. And you. we see us again in a, almost uh, 40 minutes for a meet the speakers. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.